Welcome to Syntax, a Generative Introduction, 4th Edition. My name is Andrew Carney. I'm a professor of linguistics at the University of Arizona. I'm the author of your textbook, and I'll be leading you through this series of video tutorials. Today's video is on drawing trees in LaTeX using forest. We have a guest presenter today. It's Remo Nitschke from the University of Arizona. Hey, uh, hello and welcome to this quick tutorial on drawing linguistic trees with LaTeX. Uh, this tutorial is aimed at people who already know and operate LaTeX. So uh, if you don't know the system, um, I recommend you uh, go and watch an intro on how to uh, write documents with LaTeX in the first place and then return. Um, and this is going to be uh, for trees for linguistic purposes. Okay. Now I'm going to be using Overleaf here, but uh, you can use whatever uh, you want. Um, this will work on really any text distribution and any editor as long as it's up to date and you can install these packages. Now there are a couple of packages uh, that allow you to draw trees for linguistic purposes. I have a couple here loaded. Um, I'm going to talk about Qtree first. Uh, this is what a lot of people start out with. Uh, it's not bad, it's very simple, but it really doesn't allow you a lot of options. Um, so this is not what we're going to use today. I just wanted to put it out there. So if you want a very simple program, uh, you can use this. Um, then there's uh, Tree uh, DV IPS. This is a little bit more powerful than Qtree, but it's kind of unwieldy. Uh, not very easy to use and it uses PostScript and I'm not really much of a fan. So what we're going to use today is Forest, which is great. Um, it has a very simple syntax, but it's still quite powerful because it's ticks based. So you can use a lot of ticks commands uh, to make your trees a bit more interesting. And when you have Forest installed and you call it in your preamble, you want to enable the linguistics option. Um, that'll make a couple of things easier for you, uh, and we'll see what exactly um, once we uh, start drawing a tree. So you want to have a forest installed, called in the preamble, and you want linguistics option enabled. Okay. All right. So we're gonna draw a tree for this sentence here. The detective ate some disgusting popcorn for breakfast. Now we're going to start by opening a forest environment. Um, and you'll see I have this prepared down here. This is going to be the full tree, uh, but we'll walk through it step by step. So the way forest syntax works is basically bracket annotation. If you've done bracket annotation before, then you'll know how this is uh, done. Bracket annotation is basically a different way of, of visualizing trees um, by using brackets instead of a graphic uh, visualization uh, with nodes. And forest basically operates on brackets alone. So everything that you put into a bracket is a node and any node can have daughters. And any daughters must be within the brackets of the node. Um, but the way you write your syntax is very open. So I opened a TP node here. If we compile this, this is just going to have a little TP with nothing attached. And since it doesn't have any daughters or anything around it, it doesn't quite like being so empty. So we can add something. And we'll add another bracket and give it a daughter node with an NP. And we'll recompile this again. And here's our first little tree. Very simple, just the TP and an NP daughter node. Now you noticed I put the square bracket down here. Where the square bracket is doesn't really matter as long as it uh, opens and closes the right um, node. So you can have this down here or you can have it up here. This is just a matter of preference. Um, I recommend you uh, open your brackets like this, so you have an extra line sometimes. Uh, it makes it easier to pass what you're building, but you can also just 
do it all in one line, it really doesn't matter. Um, and now we're going to open another square bracket in here. And we'll give the NP a daughter node, which will be a D. And here we go. Okay. Now that we're at the uh, morphemic level, we want to put in uh, the actual word, right? And in this case, that will be the. Now, if I do this, you'll notice uh, that it's not doing what you might want it to do. So right now, you'll have the next to the the, and that's because anything that's within that square bracket, uh, Forrest recognizes it as one node. So it doesn't matter what you do in here, this is going to be one node, which means you can give it a line break. So two backslashes makes the line break. And there you go. Now it does what you want it to do. By the way, this uh, contained node also means that you can do things like make this bold by using BF series. And here we go, and it's bold. Okay, so this is important to remember. Anything within one bracket, um, if you haven't put another sub bracket into it, is going to be recognized as just one node. Okay, so now that we have our NP done, we'll move out of the NP and we'll open the VP. And I'm going to do all of this in, in one line just for simplicity's sake, uh, but it really doesn't matter how you do it. And we'll give the VP a V. And here you go, this is a perfect little tree. And essentially, uh, that's all there is to it. Um, I'm going to uncomment this down here so you can see what the whole tree looks like, because uh, the rest is just going to be more of the same. Um, this is what the whole tree looks like. Uh, now, Forest is pretty good about uh, keeping the space, so not making the trees blow up on the page, which is something that QTree likes to do. Um, there are a couple of commands to resize nodes and, and, and connections and all that, um, but you should really get that out of the forest documentation. This is not going to be such an in-depth tutorial. There's also ways to draw movement. Um, this is going to be done with ticks commands. Uh, so you can basically use ticks commands within the forest environment, and that way you can link nodes uh, with dots and arrows and whatever you want. Um, but again, that's going to be in the documentation. This is just a quick intro for very simple trees, um, the basic syntax, and where to find the uh, package. Now, one final thing I want to show you why we enabled the linguistics option. Let me disable linguistics for a second and use just forest. Now, if you disable the linguistics option, it won't recognize line breaks within uh, your nodes, uh, which is really annoying. Um, there's ways to work around this and not use the linguistics package, but why would you? Um, just use the linguistics option um, and save yourself a lot of headache trying to get uh, line breaks to work within your nodes. All right, and that's it. That's how you build trees with LaTeX. Obviously, there are many ways. You can also just draw a text picture within, within LaTeX without using any extra help, but that's going to be a lot of work. This is very simple. You can use bracket annotation, which most of you, if you're doing uh, syntax, already know.